welcome back students so we are going with the this module which is the other partition function we have seen the npt ensemble the canonical ensemble the micro canonical ensemble now there are still some ensembles left that is a semi grand ensemble and then what we will do in this lecture we will compare across ensembles so this current lecture we will focus on the semi grand canonical ensemble and the comparison of ensembles will be seen thereafter so with the content as i told you it is something like you have a semi grand canonical ensemble like a osmotic coefficient osmotic pressure that type of systems where only one component is allowed to pass through a semi permeable membrane other components are not allowed they are blocked so it is similar to that type of ensemble then we will finish all the ensembles we have finished the discussion of ensembles we have done the npt ensemble then the nvt ensemble then nve that is a micro canonical ensemble then see how we are going to use these different ensembles because ultimately in chemical engineering or physics or chemistry ultimately you need to apply these ensembles for your properties now the discussion is regarding which ensemble i will use for what purpose so what is the thermodynamic property i want to get can i have a relation between one ensemble to other ensemble or in another way can we have a relation that our thermodynamic property develop from one ensemble is equivalent to that of another ensemble but a different condition so then we will see those examples as we go along so let us first start with the semi grand canonical ensemble so as i told you semi grand canonical ensemble although it is not much used but still i need to discuss this because this is the last ensemble so it represents an osmotic equilibrium system so osmotic means the process is osmosis in which there is a mixture in a container let's say there are a mixture number of molecules are 1 2 3 4 n1 n2 n3 n4 number of molecules are there so this mixture is in contact with an infinite bath so it is in contact with the infinite bath so the temperature is fixed okay and your volume is also fixed total volume but since only one of the compound is allowed to pass through the membrane so only the chemical potential of that compound is fixed which is the compound 1 so mu 1 or chemical potential of that compound is fixed so walls of the container here are semi permeable membranes like a semi permeable membrane such that heat can readily flow through or in or out of the system so you have a system you have a system in which heat can flow in and out it is not a isolated system but you can only have or you allow only a particular molecule that is in this case molecule 1 to pass through the semi permeable membrane so only species 1 molecule can cross the membrane so in this case the chemical potential of species 1 in the system is fixed so it means what are we talking about so it means if this is fixed this temperature is also fixed volume is also fixed the system and the numbers of other molecules so species 2 species 3 i'm suppose there are other molecules of 4 5 6 they are also fixed so only what is varying here the varying part is your number of molecules n1 and only n1 in this case fine so as before let us develop the partition function which is very similar to the canonical partition function i will not discuss here so what it is the overall partition function i will write the overall value of the partition function so this partition function is written in terms of the symbol this so it is mu1 is constant and the remaining all n2 n3 like that they are constant and temperature and volume so this is the partition function for a semi grand canonical ensemble which is equal to summation of all n1 so n1 n2 n3 like that summation e to the power of minus ei so energy of the ensemble which is a function of the number of molecules n1 n2 n3 like that n1 comma n2 comma n3 comma dot 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 and also the volume by kt okay into e to the power of n1 so here we are writing only the chemical potential of compound 1 that is mu1 n1 mu1 by kt okay so n1 so you come across all different values of n1 
so with this the energy and that is exponential term will also change so it is very similar to the grand canonical ensemble so the derivation will also follow likewise so i'm not deriving this expression so the overall derivation expression is given here and uh, so i can what i can do is that i can change this because this is an expression of the partition function canonical partition function so i can write down in terms of canonical partition function the first term n1 so it will be simply q e to the power of minus ei by kt so that is q but this q will be a function of n1 n2 okay then volume and your energy ei okay then your term this will be as it is e of n1 by kt okay so now what you do is i can then similarly i can show that it can be like we did it can be shown that so what we did in case of canonical partition function we obtained the helmholtz free function because that is a function of nvt and we know when it's a function that is a system consisting of number of molecules constant volume and temperature the helmholtz free function is the minimum in this case similarly we will write the property which is again the helmholtz free function which is equal to tv n2 then mu mu1 the function of these properties n1 n2 n3 n4 and mu1 t and v which is equal to nothing but mu1 n1 minus kt of ln mu2 so from this expression i am not deriving it here so it means the helmholtz free function here is nothing but a term minus kt ln of partition function so this is the term which is correspondingly similar to the term for canonical ensemble because we know for the helmholtz free function a is equal to minus kt ln q so here also i am writing in terms of the partition function but with a different derivation from here you can then derive the other thermodynamic properties which i will not discuss right now here so now let us see how to get the relation with the other thermodynamic properties in this case we will consider only the internal energy we will derive the internal energy from the partition function thereafter you can also consider deriving other properties such as entropy enthalpy then specific heats let us do internal energy you can proceed with the other properties in a similar fashion so i will write down the uh, the expression for uh, the grand canonical partition function this is equal to summation of n1 e to the power of n1 mu1 by kt into q of n1 n2 v and t okay so this is the partition function expression now i'll take the log of this particular partition function and if you notice carefully so this particular partition function will depend upon three variables basically one is your temperature okay one is your temperature another is your chemical potential another is your volume so i will write this particular partition function as a total differential in place of three parameters namely chemical potential volume and temperature so first let me take the log of this particular expression so or i can write down in this manner if i want to take log and then i am writing this expression so this is equal to do ln the partial derivative with respect to mu1 n2 and other properties are kept constant so this is with respect to dt then do of ln the volume now here this is kept constant with respect to mu1 then you have the other compounds n2 and then temperature into dv okay 
then plus you will have with respect to now chemical potential so it will be do ln by do mu keeping n2 the other mole constants and volume into d mu so this is the expression so i am writing the partition function of semi grand canonical ensemble in terms of temperature volume and chemical potential now what i will do i will just write down and evaluate this partition function from expression a so evaluate the derivative from a now if you evaluate the derivative from a it means i have to take log first and then i have to take the derivative is temperature. So, if you take log first obviously this will be as it is n1 mu1 kt will come outside and then you have q as it is. So, it will be dou q upon dou of ln q by dou t. So, right, let me write those two expressions when I do because the temperature term is there and temperature term if suppose this is your suppose this is your first term and this is your second term. So, in this term temperature is there, second term of temperature is there. So, we will have two derivative terms involving temperature. So, let me write those terms. So, in place of one way another thing we can do is we can write it in terms of 1 upon partition function. So, I can write in this manner also. Let me write it down then I will explain 1 upon summation n1 e to the power of n1 mu1 by kt into n1 mu1 by kt square q of n1 n2 v and t okay plus then the second term this is the first term with respect to temperature. Second term, it will operate only on the partition function, canonical partition function. So, you will only have a term of dou q. Obviously, I know not to write again and again. This is a term with respect to temperature, okay, into dt, okay. So, this is your n1 into dt. So, these are the two temperature terms. So, what I did, uh, I took this dou ln is this gear. So, what I did is, I write, wrote here 1 upon the partition function, dou of this partition function by dou t. Instead of ln, I do it directly. So, if I do it directly, you will get the first term as it is and then n1 mu1 kt with respect to t. So, it will be n1 mu1 k by minus of 1 by t square. So, this negative sign cancels out and you have q as it is. Then again, the same term here the second term is taken derivative. Then we go to the second term that is for the volume expression. In the volume expression what we will get is plus again n1 n2 to temperature just because your volume appears only in the second term so when you take a derivative on your second term we'll have a derivative term because the first term doesn't have any volume term so it is as it is it's a factor so it will be multiplied by dv then the third term is on the chemical potential again you have this term now when you are doing it again the second term won't have any term of mu, only the first term will have term of mu. So, you will have n1 kt outside. So, n1 by kt as outside, okay. Then this term will be as it is n1 mu1 by kt. Then q will be also be as it is because it does not have any terms of mu into d mu, okay. So, this is the entire expression. So, let us make it very simple. So now since we know all this expression, we make it a bit simple. So let us rewrite this term, the last expression, that is expression B. Let us rewrite this expression B term in the next slide. So let me write that expression again. So we have this term 
do ln of this equals to you have just now we got do ln this by do t I'm just writing it short because you know what these terms mean and with respect to what they are taking the derivative plus mu 1 into this term we have just now evaluated so this term we got is equal to now then let us work on those expressions if you see the first expression if I write down this expression it will be having some meaning so this I am just writing the b expression again nothing else e to the power of minus n1 mu1 by kt into q I am not writing I am writing in the short form so this is with respect to dt then uh, you have the term of another term of temperature so you will be having here the summation term is always with respect to n1 e to the power of n1 mu1 by kt into now this will be simply dou q by dou t okay this is another term into dt there are two terms of dt now the third term is a volume term so it will be going in the similar manner summation of e of n1 mu1 by kt into dou q by dou v okay and then you have another term which is for the chemical potential so it will be summation of n1 by kt e of n1 mu1 by kt n1 mu1 by kt then q will be as it is so these terms we have obtained now if you pay attention here so the first term there is some corrections here the first term is incorrectly written so it shall be 1 upon tau then you have a term of e to the power of this term is ok so what you will be having is you have a term n1 mu1 by kt square n1 mu1 by kt square this term will be there ok then the summation will be outside so this term we missed out so now if you pay attention here so it means that uh, what I have is so this term if I take this mu1 by kt square if I take it outside mu1 by kt square outside what do we have inside inside if you see it will be simply be n1 e of n1 mu1 kt into q by n1 so what is this term into n1 so it means this term is nothing but n1 bar isn't it because based on definition so if i take mu1 kt square outside then the n1 is multiply so let me just uh, remodify this expression you have this partition function keep it inside so keep it inside so this term basically this term is nothing but n1 bar isn't it because n1 is multiplied by the partition function or summation of the divided by the partition function so this entire terms this becomes mu1 into n1 bar by kt square that's it so this is n1 bar is the average number of molecules of type 1 okay so this is what you will be having so then the second term if you see the second term likewise if you want to write it down the second term let it be like this only we do not do any change here n1 e, e to the power of n1 mu1 by kt so what you do is I will divide this by q and multiply by q so there will be a q term here and this will become dou ln q by dou t ok because when, when you have a q in the denominator it takes the logarithmic term so I do this arrangement ok then this term the remaining term 1 by t I do not do anything just keep it as it is n1 mu1 by kt dou q by dou v I do not do anything here keep it as it is into dv 
so here you have i think we have missed here dv and here it is d mu 1 so dv plus now in this case again the same thing appears so if you see if i take this this side suppose i'll take this here if i write like this 1 by kt i take it outside then i will have n1 into e to the power of n1 mu 1 by kt into q by the partition function so then this term will be nothing but n1 into your d mu 1 so this is multiplied by the variable d mu 1 so if you see again this term this becomes n1 bar so it means the next expression what i do let me write out i will just simplify it for you so this is the term we obtain from the first equation and this i can write down as u by kt square u by kt square into dt u by kt square into dt plus then this becomes the expression for pressure if you see this becomes the expression of pressure so it will be p bar by kt into dv and then this will become this becomes the term this will become u by kt square the entire term becomes u by kt square because it's the average energy term fine so and this will be and the remaining term i told you it will be simply be equal to n1 n1 bar into d mu 1 by kt this will be the term so now we have got this expression this p bar by kt is nothing but this expression dou q by dou v so if i take so uh, just i want to take this term so it will be something like this to make it more reasonable so what i do is i put this expression as it is now i divide and multiply by v so it is v into dou q by dou v i do like this into v this expression i do then what it will become is i take this inside e because this v is inside so v into e of n1 mu1 by kt into this will become dou ln q by dou v okay by this so this expression this entire expression is nothing but v bar so this is nothing but p bar by kt so this expression becomes p bar by kt because initially we have derived this is p bar by kt so this is the way we have written this p bar by kt and this the term as it is the u by kt square follows from this term the same term you have getting it is a just q so do l and q so this entire term multiplied by this expression becomes u by kt square into dt now you add up all these values so n1 bar by mu1 by kt square plus e bar so this is e bar basically e bar so we get is equal to kt square into do ln by do t okay because what i am doing is this term plus this term is nothing but do ln partition function by do t from this expression so this term plus this term is equal to this term this is one term so here i can get the internal energy so what is the internal energy i can easily get e bar is equal to u equals to kt square minus this entire term minus n1 bar by mu1 because what i did was i multiplied kt square both sides so if i multiply kt square both sides i will be getting this e1 is nothing but u which is equal to kt square by n1 minus mu1 which is equal to if you see in this expression so this n1 bar by kt is equal to do ln this by dt so n1 bar upon so or i can write down n1 bar by kt equal to do ln by do mu1 or n1 bar equal to kt into do ln of the partition function by do mu1 okay this is the expression 
for n bar so you have the expression for n bar you have the expression for internal energy and you need the expression for p bar which we already know this p bar i've already written so p bar here is equal to kt into do ln partition function with respect to volume okay so this term i can write down i can simplify this further so i can write here as equal to u equal to kt square by do ln by do t then what i do is n1 bar i replace from here so it will be kt into mu so it will be kt by do ln into this into mu1 so you have an expression for the energy internal energy you have an expression for pressure and you have an expression for average number of molecules n bar so n1 bar sorry it's all n1 bar it's n1 bar so this is how you obtain the uh, the different thermodynamic properties internal energy pressure and number of molecules you can also do a similar exercise using the entropy equation and probability expression and find out the remaining terms such as enthalpy entropy and the specific heat okay so now we come to the end of all the ensembles now the issue is we have seen the microcanonical ensemble we have seen canonical ensemble we have seen grand canonical ensemble and now the npt ensemble and now today we have seen the semi grand ensemble so what is the comparison how do we compare all the ensembles so important thing you should note is the estimated results for any thermodynamic characteristic should remain consistent across different ensembles so whichever ensemble you are choosing if the conditions can be equivalent then you should get the same value of the thermodynamic property for example this will be only be true so obviously these expressions or these values will only be true when the number of molecule is significantly high because you know this entire thing is directly proportional to the fluctuation as root of n so as n goes to infinity or n goes to avogadro number so you know this fluctuation 1 upon root of avogadro's number is lesser and lesser so obviously you can always compare the thermodynamic properties obtained across ensembles when the number of molecules or particles are pretty large or they are towards a avogadro's number value for example let me show one example let's see we can calculate entropy using the microcanonical ensemble at fixed number of particles volume and energy so for a isolated system for a microcanonical ensemble we know that the entropy is given as k into ln of the degeneracy so for a isolated ensemble the degeneracy s we have already got that is s is equal to k of ln this so this is the degeneracy at this particular state n v and e we know this now so it means that i will also get the similar value of entropy if i have this canonical ensemble only chance of having the similar value of entropy derived from this canonical ensemble is that when this temperature and this energy are equal equivalent means the temperature corresponding to the average energy used in the microcanonical ensemble calculation so this energy which we have used for comparing the entropy is the average energy so this average energy should be equal to the equivalent temperature which we have used in the canonical ensemble then only the entropy will be the same but getting this because this is very important because the value of entropy obtained from microcanonical ensemble comes from a isolated system having number of molecules volume and energy that energy is the average energy and that average energy should correspond to that particular temperature the equivalent temperature you should convert energy to temperature because you know for a monoatomic gas it is 3 by 2 kt for an n number of molecules it is 3 by 2 nkt so that 3 by 2 nkt whatever energy you are getting at that temperature that should be the same then only you can say that the entropy is exactly similar so let us see with the mathematically how we can prove that so we will always consider the molecules in terms of infinity so that the fluctuation can be ignored so let us write the probable state or you can say the most probable state which is equal to q we have done this earlier q let us write the canonical partition function q of nvt 
this becomes we have seen that either you write states or you write levels both are the same either you in a enumerate all the states or you write in terms of energy levels what does that mean so if you know all the energy states you do the boltzmann's uh, summation you get the partition function or you know the levels corresponding to every energy states you multiply with the number of degeneracies corresponding to each energy state either way now this is a state so can i write a most probable energy state so it means i will write that particular state such that ej here is becomes e bar i will write that expression of partition function when ej is equal to e bar so what is the expression become then the expression will become q of nvt then will become just remove the summation because we don't need to enumerate all the states we only need those state or we need only that state which is the most probable and which is that most probable state which is given by e bar and what is e bar e bar is the corresponding average energy as provided in the microcanonical ensemble so at that particular energy state i can just remove the summation because it's the most probable state just multiply the degeneracy at that e bar into e to the power of minus e bar by kt okay so now what you do is you take log both sides take log both sides if you take log both sides you will get ln of nvt then you will get ln of this then you will get minus ei by kt okay so now you multiply kt both sides you will get kt ln q of nvt equals to kt of ln this e bar minus so you can write e bar as u u bar as sorry e bar as u because e bar is the average energy is nothing but the internal energy okay now this is the expression but this is we know this is a what is this this is a from a canonical en ensemble so this is a so or it is minus a is equal to kt ln of okay because from canonical ensemble we know by definition a is equal to minus kt ln q or what i can do is i can write here a as equal to u minus ts then it will be u minus ts equal to kt ln of minus u just open the bracket you will get here it will minus u plus ts equal to kt ln okay now this expression just i'm writing it here so this expression if you simplify you have minus u also in this side okay so minus u and minus u both cancels out so what you have is simply ts equals to kt ln of okay or i can cancel out t so ultimately what i get is the expression of the microcanonical ensemble so i started with the canonical partition function i obtained the partition function but i took that energy state which is the most probable that is e bar so ultimately thereafter i am getting the entropy which is equivalent to that obtained by my microcanonical ensemble so it means the one the particular property obtained from canonical ensemble is equivalent to the property which is entropy obtained from the microcanonical ensemble so this is what one you will get the equivalence between the two ensembles another one is the average number of particles so it is mu vt so i will compare here mu vt and nvt so what i will do so we will say that this n bar is equal to mu average number of particles so let us first write that expression so this we have written already vt of mu 
let us write down the expressions again summation of e to the power of me f e i n v by k t so this will be the energy states i for n molecules So if I open this up, simplify it. So this term is nothing but Q, Q of n v t. Okay, E of n mu k t into Q. So most probable state then becomes, as I told you, you should take that particular state where the chemical potential corresponds to the average number of molecules. So it means that this particular state. V, T and mu is given by E of n bar. Now instead of n, I will just simply write here n bar mu by k t. So I can take this expression outside because that is the average number of molecules. So then again summation over energy states I for n bar molecules. So it will be e to the power of minus e i into n bar by v by k t. Okay, same thing. So this becomes e to the power of n bar mu by k t into q of. Then it becomes instead of n v t, it will become n bar v t. N bar v t. Okay. Now what you do, you take the log on both sides on equation one. Take logarithm both sides, so it will be ln of this equals to. So it will be n bar mu by k t plus ln q of n bar v of t. Okay. Now this, if you notice carefully, this we have already obtained the relation. That is the ln of this partition function is nothing but P V by K T. If you remember our earlier expressions, we have proved this. So I will just replace this logarithmic of this partition function using P V by K T. So it means I'll get an another thing. I can also do thing that is n bar into mu. N bar into mu. I can also write as capital G. Okay, it gives free energy. So it means I will get this as P V by K T, and this n bar mu is G, G by K T, plus L n Q, but only the K means it's the most probable value, average number of molecules. Now what I will do is, let us multiply this by K T both sides. So if you do this, it will get P V equal to G plus K T L n Q of n bar V T. Okay. Now let us write G as a plus P V. So let us write G as a plus P V. Helmholtz free function plus pressure volume work. So it is P V plus a plus P V plus K T into L n Q of n bar V T. So this P V P V cancels. So what you get is again the same expression. It is a is minus K T L n of n bar V. Okay, so what we get is a equal to minus k t l n n bar v t. So, so I can just summarize this. So what we have got is finally we got this a equal to minus k t of l n q n bar v t. Now with this expression is very important. What it shows is that the last equality means the equality here shows that if we start from the Grand canonical ensemble partition function at a fixed v t and mu, and use only the most probable or the average number of particles n corresponding to the fixed values of v t and mu. So it means if I fix the value of mu with that corresponding mu, what is n? So with that mu, what is corresponding values average number of molecules n bar? If we do that. 
then we can obtain the thermodynamic relation of the canonical ensemble partition function and the Helmholtz energy. So we started with this NVT canonical partition again we started from the grand see we started from the partition function which is a for grand canonical partition function and from there we took a most probable number of molecules that is n bar and we again obtain the same expression for the Helmholtz free function which we have obtained earlier for a canonical ensemble. So it means again I can relate or obtain the same value of Helmholtz free function whether I use the grand canonical ensemble or the canonical ensemble. This is where you can equate the ensembles. Well, now there are so many ensembles available. Which one do we use? So the response as I told you in the previous slide the response is analogous to the scenario observed in classical thermodynamics because in classical thermodynamics you have these properties remember we got this G A okay capital then enthalpy huh, all these functions you got this. So what to use when? So it will all depend upon what is the property or system. So G you know these are those properties or systems where you have temperature and pressure to be important. Helmholtz free function where temperature and volume is to be important likewise. So when the selection, so obviously in a classical thermodynamics this will also follow a similar manner. So the applicable thermodynamic function varies depends on the system limitation. In the context of completely isolated system, let us say for a completely isolated system means where the system does not exchange either matter or energy that is the microcanonical ensemble we know that the entropy is the maximum. So the for entropy is the maximum we know this is given by K L N O this entropy is the maximum. So when you have N V E systems where you want to work on these systems you have to work with a microcanonical ensemble because here the corresponding entropy is the maximum. So microcanonical ensemble is deemed suitable for systems of N V E and a direct correlation exists between the natural logarithmic of the microcanonical partition function and the entropy which is this expression. Okay. Likewise for a system with a constant value of particle number, volume and temperature it is established in classical thermodynamics that the Helmholtz energy reaches this minimum state or minimum value. So if that is true we have already know what is that A equal to then it become minus KT of ln Q. So this is the minimum Helmholtz free function. So for a state having number of molecules, constraint volume and temperature Helmholtz free function is the minimum. So this expression holds true. So given the specified limitation as above it is a canonical ensemble that is deemed suitable. So if you want to work with any system having n v t then you have to use the canonical ensemble because the Helmholtz energy is related to the partition function of the canonical ensemble. Similarly for a isobaric isothermal ensemble that is restricted values it is also again connected to the Gibbs energy. So you know what is that again this is minus k t ln of this, this expression. So when you have expressions where you have the NPT then the Gibbs energy is related to the partition function using this expression. So it is the Gibbs energy and you have to work with the NPT ensemble. Okay. So this is what we wanted to actually connect with you regarding various ensembles. So we come to the end of this lecture. So as I told you, you please go through the Sandler's book and uh, try to obtain the other thermodynamic properties for a semi grand canonical ensembles using the probability expression get the value of entropy and the specific heat. Thank you. Mm -hmm.